always easy for the average scientist to understand everything he reads in the Quran on such subjects without having recourse to specialized research. This means that to understand all such verses of the Quran, one is today required to have an absolutely encyclopedic knowledge, by which I mean one which embraces very many disciplines. The Quran is a religious book which has no scientific purpose. Whenever man is invited to reflect upon the works of creation and numerous natural phenomena, the obvious intention is to stress divine omnipotence. In these reflections, we find allusions to data connected with firmly established scientific knowledge. These findings clearly appeared only in modern times. When one compares religious teachings with material data, one must carefully take account of the meaning of the words of the Quranic text. This is a suggestive example in a verse of the Suratul Araf about the creation. Inna rabakumul lau al-ladhi ghalaka samawati wal arda fi sitati ayamin. The common translation is Your Lord is God who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Nevertheless, we know that the Arabic word ayam the usual translation of which is days, appears in the Quran with the meaning of very long periods of time. Examples are given in my book, The Bible, Quran and Science. No equivalence exists with the precise meaning of the word in the Bible, where the days of the week are considered, the seventh one being the Sabbath, when God is described in the Bible as having rested. The Quran does not mention it at all. The major notion to be derived from the Quran concerning the creation is a concomitance in the celestial and terrestrial evolutions with the fundamental data about the existence of an initial unique gaseous mass whose elements, although at first fused together, subsequently became separated. These notions are expressed in the Surah Fusilla. Thumma istawa ila samai wa hiya duhanun. Then God turned to the heaven when it was a smoke, and in the Surah Al Anbiya. Ah. أَوَلَمْ يَعَى الَّذِينَا كَفَرُوا إِنَّ سَمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَنَا تَعَدْ كَنْ فَفَتَكْنَحُمَا Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and earth were joined together, then we clothe them asunder. The separation process resulted in the formation of multiple worlds, a notion which crops up a dozen times in the Quran when it has formed the second verse in the Surah Al-Fatiha Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Praise be to God the Lord of the world All this is in perfect agreement with modern ideas on the existence of a primary nebula and the process of secondary separation of the elements that had formed the initial unique mass. This separation resulted in the formation of galaxies and then, when these divided, of stars from which the planets were to be born. All that is in perfect agreement with modern notions concerning the history of the universe. Moreover, reference is made in the Quran to an intermediary creation between the heavens and the earth, as in Surat al Furqan, Walakad Ralakna Samawati Walarda, Wama Daina Huma. 
We have created the heaven, the earth, and what is between them. This intermediary creation corresponds to the modern discoveries of bridges of matter which have been demonstrated as present outside organized astronomical systems. Or can we imagine that a man, much more than a thousand years ago, could have been the author of such reflections which proceed from a general concept of the universe when this concept was not formed until centuries after his death. In the Quran we find notions about the nature and the movement of celestial formations. For example, the sun and the moon, which were previously defined in the Bible as luminaries, are distinguished in the Quran by the use of different epithets, light, nur for the moon, torch, siraj for the sun. Presently we know that the first is an inert body which reflects light. The second is a celestial formation in a state of permanent combustion and a source of light and heat. The word star, najm, in the Quran is accompanied by another qualifying it which indicates that it burns and consumes itself as it pierces through the shadows of the night. It is the word Thakib. The word Kaukab definitely seems to mean the planets which are celestial formations that reflect and do not produce light like the sun. Today we know that the celestial organization is balanced by the position of the stars in defined orbits and the interplay of gravitational forces related to their mass and speed of movement, each with its own motion. Orbit and own motion are the foundation of this balance. They are precisely what the Quran describes in the Surah Al-Anbiya. وَهُوَ الَّذِي غَلَكَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّارَ وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْكَمَرَ كُلٌ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ God is the one who created the night, the day, the sun and the moon. Each one is traveling in an orbit with its own motion. This movement is expressed by the verb sabaha, yasbahun, in the text. The primitive meaning of the word, I said, the primitive meaning of the word, carrying the, the idea of a motion which comes from any moving body, be it the movement of one leg as one runs, or the action of swimming in water. The sequence of day and night is expressed in terms that today are highly significant from a scientific point of view by using the, the verb kawara, kawara second form. So the Surah Al-Zumar described the night describe the way the night winds or coils itself about the day, just as in the original meaning of the verb, a turban is wound